Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Welcome to another great day of ministry, another great day of Jesus Christ being Lord of Lords and Him being King of Kings. Praise God. So we're looking forward to some great things that God has in store for today. Praise God. No matter what you're going through in your life, God has a special word just specifically for you. Uh, now, we're going to get ready to get into the Word of God today. And I want you, if you got your Bibles, got your, 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 your telephones, praise God, <clears throat> your iPads, whatever you got, take a moment to share this with your friends because it'll be a special word for you today. I'm going to be talking to you today about exercising explosive faith, exercising explosive faith, because, you know, one of the things I'll be seeing, I'm hearing a lot today, you know, people are saying, you know, I want something greater, I want a, a fresh revelation from God, and, you know, uh, the, uh, but, you know, faith is something that, you know, that never grows old. And what is happening is a lot of people feel like I already know about faith. I already, you know, done study of faith. I heard other messages of faith, but you're still broke. If you're a pastor, your church still not growing. Are you following me? Money's still funny, praise God. But I'm telling you something, that when you understand faith as God wants you to understand it, great and mighty things will begin to happen in your life, happen in your family, happen in your ministry, happen in your finances and everything. And so I'm going to be teaching us today about exercising explosive faith today. And I want to take, I want to start off here in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1 and verse number 3. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1 and verse number 3. And it says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith grows exceedingly. Because that your faith grows <laughs> exceedingly, praise God. And that's what the Spirit of God wants you to have. Let's look at for a moment um, uh, 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 here in the, uh, uh, on point number one is this. What is explosive faith? Let's think about this because we just seen the scripture says that your faith is supposed to grow exceedingly. Okay? Not something, you know, where, where you were last year, it should not be where you are this year. <laughs> praise God. God says, I want your faith to literally grow exceedingly exceedingly now look at this one what is explosive faith number one explosive faith means able to produce a rapid and accelerated release of power this is now in a minimal amount of time i'm gonna say it again explosive faith means to produce a rapid and accelerated release of power in a minimal amount of time. You're going to see that, when, that the only thing that God was waiting on, with some examples I'm going to show you right now, is for people's faith to get at a certain level to be released and to be able to change the situation. Sometimes we say, I'm waiting on God. God said, I'm waiting on you, on you, praise God, to get your faith developed at that level. Now, notice the book of Acts, chapter number 6 and verse number 7. Let's see what that says. It says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. See, look, look what followed. Uh, uh, what, number one, uh, he says he, had, he was full of faith and is full of power, but notice what followed. It says great wonders and miracles followed the person that was full of faith. And see, so what God's saying is that, you know, you want miracles to follow, you want things to happen in your life supernaturally, he said it's going to always follow your faith. You got that? Now, notice the book of Acts, chapter number uh, 11, verse 24, what it says. It says, for he was, this is Barnabas here, he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and much people was added to the Lord. So notice when he was full of the Holy Ghost and faith, it causes more souls to be saved. So sometimes people say, well, I don't know why come my church is not growing. All right, are you full of faith? <laughs> are you following me? Where is your faith level? Because we'll see that, once again, what following faith is results. Results are always preceded by faith. And then notice in the book of Acts, chapter number 16, and verse number 5, what it says. And so were the ch churches established in faith and increased in number daily. So what God is saying here, you want to increase in your church? You want, you want to increase on, on your salary at your job? You want your business to increase? He says here, get established in faith. <laughs> you follow me? And I'm seeing this more and more that people are becoming too spiritual to now be a part of faith. They say, you know what? You know, I'm going on to more powerful things, more greater things. Nothing wrong with that. But if, you're, but if it's not built upon the foundation of faith, the results, no matter how much you fast, no matter how much you pray, the results are always going to follow 
your faith. You got that. So notice here as we see this, that that results are always a result. You're going to always experience results based upon your faith. Uh, at, uh, Matthew chapter number nine and verse 27. Look what it says there. It says, and Jesus departed thence and two blind men followed him, crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him and Jesus said unto them, this is what he says, believe ye that I'm able to do this. And verse number, and they said, yes, Lord. In other words, that's how we believe it. But then notice in verse 29, then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And then he says in verse 30, and their eyes were opened. So what, what I'm saying here is that that was according to their faith. Their eyes were opened according to their faith. Their money increased according to their faith. Their, 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 their church membership increased according to their faith. So, so it's not God that's holding your church back from growing. It's not God that's keeping clients out of your business. Are you following me? It's not God that's keeping your body from getting healed. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And that's why the devil is trying to sidetrack people from getting into faith, you know, and, and stand home from church and, you know, say, well, I ain't got to get in the word of God today. And because he, he, the devil knows that if people focus and, on, on their faith growing and developing, that he can no longer, I mean, rack habit alive. Because the Bible said that the way, that, that the Bible says that that the shield of faith will quench all the fire darts of the devil. So that's why the devil is trying to sidetrack people from from really getting this explosive faith that will get uh, results in your life. So if you think about this, if you go down to Walmart and they'll ask you, 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 you know, it's full of clothes, it's full of uh, uh, different all kind of all kind of items in there. But, and, you know, all those items are available for purchase. But what it, what it says is, go to the cash register, it lets you know what is the currency. Are you using a credit card? Are you using dollars? Are you using, what, you know, what are you using? Because it's based upon your currency, you know, and, and what you've got in your bank account, you can get anything in that account, in that, in that, in that uh, store, if you have enough currency. Well, faith is the currency of the spirit realm. And Jesus said, according to your faith, whatever, all, I've given you all things. I've already blessed you. I've already, you know, by grace are you saved. He said, but if you don't apply faith to it, although it belongs to you, you'll never receive it. See, notice here what the book of, even the book of Ephesians says, chapter number two and verse number eight, what it says. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith faith. That means even though grace has provided it, yet if you, don't, if you don't apply your faith to it, it will never do you any personal good. By grace are you saved, but it's through faith. You've got to use your faith to get it. Are you following me? God provided it. You have to receive it by faith. And that's why Satan would try to keep Christians out of the faith that takes what you be belongs to you from God. Notice the book of Hebrews now, chapter number four and verse number two, Hebrews four, two, what it says. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith that heard it. That means you can hear the word. People say, I didn't heard that before. I hadn't heard all the messages on faith already, but are you mixing what you heard with what, you, what you've heard with faith? Because, that, because it says the word did not profit them, even though they heard it, even though they were in the same church, went to the same school, listened to the same sermons. But it said, but if you don't mix faith with what you've heard, it still won't profit you. And a lot of people today are not profiting a year from, and they're frustrated because, because they've said, this person let me down, this person did what I want them to do, and I feel like nobody loves me, nobody's concerned about me. But no, he says now, you went to the same church they went to. You had the same opportunity they had. But what was the difference? They mixed faith with what they heard. Uh, you know, I remember back years ago when I was in ministry school, uh, there was a lot of students that went to the same classes I went through. Uh, you, know, I'm, you know, sit on the Ken Hagen, sit on the Apostle Price, same way I did. You know, graduate like just like I did, same certificates. But what was the difference? I mixed it with faith. <laughs> you follow me? I didn't just hear the word of faith. I took the time to study to show myself approved unto God until I got what they were saying. And see, that's where the difference is at. A lot of people say, I've heard this. You know, I already know all this. But, uh, but do you really know it? 
Are you a follower? Well, I believe that. Okay, but do you really believe it? Jesus said, do you believe? He's, you know, and they say, yes, Lord, I believe. He said, okay, then what you believe, based upon your level of faith, you can appropriate what you believe and get the results from it. You follow what I'm saying today? So God demands faith. God demands faith from us. You got that? Notice the book of Hebrews, chapter number uh, 4. It's, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, what it says. It says, for, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. See, you don't only believe that he is. Even the devil believed that. But you must also believe that he is also a rewarder of those that seek him. You got that today. So let's, let's look at three steps. We're going to look at three steps then of, uh, to, in order to produce this, what we call explosive faith. And we're going to look at some people, you know, that they, they, they applied these things in their lives. And these three basic things that they applied, they, they activated explosive faith. So number one. You must have faith-filled words. I'm, I'm sorry, you must have faith-filled hearing. You must hear the word of God until faith comes. I'm going to say it again. You must hear the word of God until faith comes. Are you following? Because sometimes we say, well, I heard that one time. No, you must keep on hearing it. You must keep on studying it. You must keep on meditating in it until faith comes. Until you, you, you don't just believe that you have it. You know that you have it based upon the word of God and the revelation you have had. Number two is you must have faith-filled speaking. That, you know, you can tell when your faith has grown to a certain level because your words will change. Instead of, I, I, don't, I don't know why God did this. There's nothing that happens to me. But, but you start saying, no, it's mine now. It's mine. See, hope says I'll get it sometime. Faith says I have it now. Faith means, faith says I'm confident of that which I was hoping for, but I'm now convinced of that which I do not see. So number one, you must have faith-filled hearing. You must hear the word of God until faith comes. No matter whether it's one day, one week, or one month. Are you following me? You got to get yourself in a position of hearing the word of God. Number two, you must have faith-filled speaking. You must get rid of all negative talk in your in, in all those areas. And the only way you can really do that is but David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against. You got that word in your heart. So number three is you must have faith-filled actions. Your actions must correspond with the word that you're saying and the word that you're hearing. You must now begin to apply. The Bible said Abraham started calling those things that be not as though they already were. So you got to have faith-filled actions that affirm that you really believe that I have what I've been hearing in Jesus' name. Now let's look, let's look here for a moment, and we're going to see these things in, taking place in two uh, examples we're going to have here. Look at, first of all, let's look here with, in the book of Acts, chapter number 14, and verse number 8, what it says. It says, And there sat a, a, a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. No matter how long it's been taken, no, had never walked. Verse 9, the same heard, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. What did he get faith to be healed? Based upon what he heard. And Paul looked at him and said, you know what? He's been hearing the word of God, and I can now see that, that he now has faith to be healed. His faith has grown to the level now that he now believes that healing belongs to him. So then Paul said then with a loud voice, he said, well, verse 10, and he said with a loud voice, stand up right on your feet, and he leaped up and walked. See, when a person, when a person really has got faith, and they've heard that word, and they've been speaking that word. It, then when, then when you, it, 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 all of a sudden you begin to speak it with some authority. Paul spoke that word. See, it can come through your spoken word or it can come through an anointed vessel's word. Paul spoke that word because he perceived the man had faith to be healed. But he kept hearing that word. You got that? He kept hearing that word. And no matter how long it had happened, the Bible says Paul perceived. You can look at people. You can locate people by the words coming out of their mouths. You can locate people by their, their actions, by their, their, their you know, and, uh, 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 even though uh, 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 apparently the man's, in the man's eyes, you can see the man had heard the word enough until faith came. Are you following me? And Paul said, this man got faith to be healed. How about this man got faith to buy that house? This man got faith to buy that car. 
This man, no, this woman or this man got faith to pay that electricity bill. Got faith to, you know, to get that job that you need. Got faith to get that tumor removed out of your body. In other words, you keep hearing the word of God until you have faith to be healed of faith to be provided. But it came by hearing Paul speak. You got that. So notice here again, we're going to see the same example in the, with, with a woman with the issue of blood in the book of Mark chapter number five and verse number 25. It says, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. But when she heard, there we go. When she heard of Jesus, came, actions, actions, came in the press behind and touched his garment. So we can see she heard, she came, she touched. She heard, she came, she touched. She heard the word, put actions to it. And then notice verse 28, what, it's, uh, 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 what it says, for she said. See, when you, got, when you have faith, you can locate a person's faith with their words and their actions. For she said, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. She spoke uh, uh, like, like Abraham did, calling those things to be not as though they were. When I touch him, because I got now faith to be healed, I've been hearing the word of God, I've been hearing the word of God, and now I got faith to be healed. So the moment I touch him, the moment I touch him, I'll be made whole. And notice how we're talking about explosive faith works immediately. It produces an acceleration in a rapid amount of time. Notice how that worked. And, 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 and it says here in verse 29, uh, it says, and straightway. Oh, see, different, just quick. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. What, what, was, what was her miracle waiting on? If she wasn't waiting on Jesus, she was, Jesus, the power of God was waiting on her faith to get to that point. She kept hearing the word of God. She said with the words, she came, her corresponding actions, are you following those areas? And so now we can see that it immediately, verse 29, straightway the fountain of our blood was dried up. And then notice what happened to Jesus, verse 30. Verse 30, it says, in Jesus immediately knowing. See how, how quick that was? Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about him in the press and said, who touched my clothes? See, Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. But faith will always get God's attention. There were many people thronging Jesus in that time, but only one person got his attention and caused him to stop. And that was the woman that took the time to hear the word of God, took the time to hear it until it changed her words, until it changed her actions, until she began to call those things that be not as though they were. That's called explosive faith. And she didn't care about who you know, about her condition. She didn't compare about she didn't care about who was about the throng, the crowd, about what people would say about her. She went forward, heard the word, spoke the word, acted on the word, and she experienced explosive faith. Remember I said that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that definition to you again, that explosive faith means to produce rapid and a, a rapid and accelerated release of power in a minimal amount of time. And she experienced that. You know, she had been going to the doctors for 12 years, but in, 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 in a minute time, she got a hold to that word, keep hearing that word, but the moment faith came, she moved on that, she came, she said she did corresponding actions and that's what it takes and what's happening is a lot of people are getting so involved with so many different things maybe you might be on youtube be on TikTok and like that and i'm not putting none of that down but some uh, but, are, but are you hearing faith are you hearing things that's feeding your faith because that's what's determining the result that you're getting you know uh, uh, faith does not answer to prayer not how much you pray we, we should pray Faith does not answer to fasting, and we should fast. Faith answers to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then once that word comes in, you get that word in your spirit, then you speak that word and you act on that word. And then Jesus told her in verse number 34, and Jesus said unto her, daughter. 
thy faith has made you whole. Notice he didn't say your prayer. Notice he didn't say your fasting. He said your faith made you whole. And this is what people are missing. That's why God been putting on my heart to get back and teach them faith again. Because this faith is something that, that's missing a lot. People are having an anniversary, nothing wrong with anniversaries. They're having birthday celebrations, nothing wrong with all that. But what's happening is people are trying to, because their faith is not working, they're trying to do that to be able to take care of their churches and, and things like that. Nothing wrong with none of that. But I'm saying, but if we just get a hold of faith, the Bible says faith can rest. Faith can, you know, faith is, is, is an act. Faith w works when we work it correctly. So that's, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to be, um, myself and Dr. Bell, God is, is, is uh, calling us to, to, to bring this new church here back in Phoenix, Arizona. And there's, a, there's a, 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 the flyer rack that's coming up on your screen right now. I want you to see this. And, it, and it's going to be called the One Hour Church. <laughs> Man. Yes, right. My, my, my wife and I, we, we've been back in, we, we've been in Las Vegas for the last five years. Coming back to Phoenix to start a brand new church September the 10th. And it's, going, it's called a One Hour Church. And what the assignment God has given me is to teach faith. Is to give you some, some of the single people that you're, you're, you're struggling. You know what I mean? You're trying to get an apartment, can't afford an apartment, trying to get a house, can't afford a house. But faith can override all of that. Remember the woman, the woman with the issue of blood, she had spent all her money, nothing better. So she, she needed something that her, money that her money couldn't do. But faith can still get you the house that you want. Faith can get you the apartment you need. Faith can still get you the car. Faith can get you the job that you need. And so I'm going to be teaching on faith, other, other subjects also. But the first thing I'm going to be teaching on is the topic of faith on that area. So one hour church. Come as you are. Come as you are. In other words, you know, uh, you know, no matter what you, what you, what's going on in your life right now, you can still, you're still welcome to come to our one-hour church. You know, if you're tired of religion, you know, you're worn out with all the things that's going on in churches. Praise God. Not putting nobody down. But if you're worn out on that, and you said, God, I need, I need a chance. I need some results in my life. Our one-hour church is, is the, it's a, it's a solution for you. We're gonna be starting again September the tenth. Uh, and, and, and we're going to have a, a special service one hour from 9 to 10. Then, then we're going to invite you to a special brunch right after that at 10 o'clock, a wonderful brunch free of charge. But you need to register. So right there on Facebook, if you see that, if you scroll down there, you'll be able to see a, a link down there where you can actually register for the, uh, the, the brunch, the, 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 our service so we know you're coming. And then also for the brunch, we can make sure that we have enough food for you and like that. But it's going to be at the Holiday Inn, right on the, the address right on the screen for you. Holiday Inn there in South Phoenix, and we're looking forward to seeing you there. All right, so, so again, thank God for you. Thank God for what God has done in your life. We're going to prepare now to receive our tithe and offerings today. Because, you know, as, we, as, we, as we're preparing for this new church, amen, one, we call it one-hour church, praise God. We're not going to have no two or three hours, a one-hour service. We're going to do praise and worship. We're going to do uh, 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 the Word of God. Tied up everything all in one hour. You're going to be in and out in one hour, praise God. Power packed. It'd be great. So right now during this month of August, we're going to be doing a lot of marketing and getting the word out and things like that. And so we want you to join with us you know, in faith, but also join with us in your tithes and offerings for those that say you believe that God's leading you to be a part of what we're doing there. And uh, I want you to, you know, right there on Facebook, if you look down there, you can actually give through our, our partial partnership there, or you can give through our cash app. The cash app will work you know, in those areas, or you can, you know, the cash app is dollar sign apostle I am, or you can get through Zale, our Zale there, or, or if you look on, 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 on there, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, on some of the things there right there, you, you'll also see where you can have the, uh, the QR code there. I'm not sure if that's on all your, on, on, on Facebook there, but I want you to know that we appreciate what God is doing in your life. I want you to join with us. Amen. I want you to invite people to come with you also to our, to our, 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 our brand new church. Amen. You know, praise God. It's going to be nothing like you've seen before. Praise God. One hour in by nine. Glory to God. Out by 10. Strong praise and worship. Powerful word of God. We're going to do communion every Sunday. Praise God. It's going to be a powerful time. My wife and I, Dr. Beverly and I, we're going to be looking forward to being with all of you again. We, we, you know, we've not had church in like five, six years, but God is sending us back to Arizona to start. My goal is to start 50 churches in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Dr. Craig, yeah. Oh, yeah. 50 churches. I believe that this message is going to be so strong. It's going, to, it's going to cover the whole state of Arizona, praise God. We're going to see God do some powerful things through this ministry. So I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm believing God that the word that I've shared with you today is, is a word in due season. It's where the minute you need, and I'm calling it explosive faith, where you're going to get results that, you, that you've been praying about, results that you've been saying, God, what's going on? I'm going to church, but, but, but what's happening? I'm, you know, uh, I'm going to be teaching you on faith. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach you also on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on this same message on faith. I want you to start. I want you to grow. I want you to develop in faith because this the only thing that's in between you and the miracle you need from God is your faith in God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to pray for your father in the name of Jesus. I pray for every person that is there. I pray that this message is not falling upon uh, upon, uh, stony ground, Father, but this message uh, comes forth in the revelation of the Holy Spirit and that every person listening to me right now, Father, their faith grows exceedingly. And no matter what they've been believing you for, God, through this message of faith, they're going to get faith to be healed. They're going to get faith to get their needs met, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we give you thanks for it. We give you praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I'm looking forward to being with you all again on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday uh, at 9 a.m. We're going to be back again with you at 9 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday. On Tuesday, And because I really want to start building up for this, uh, this grand opening that we're going to be having in, uh, in, in uh, September the 10th. And I'm going to start building your faith up because I'm believing God for 200 people on the first day. So I, so I want you to help be, be one of God's evangelists, help and invite other people to come and let's be a part of seeing the state of Arizona, one for Jesus Christ. 50 churches in Jesus name. Let's agree on that in the name of Jesus. And I'm believing God for your business to explode. I believe in God for your job to explode the same way. The same grace, the same anointing that's on my life, on my wife's life. We decree it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ, on your church and on your business in the name of Jesus. So, Ken, thank you for being a part of this ministry today. I believe that, that, that and I decree that, that your life has changed forever. You'll never be the same again. And until we see you on Tuesday at the same time, this is Apostle Alfred Craig and Dr. Beverly Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.